Welcome back to the camper build, everybody. Well, I started the day with a plan, and those plans have changed. Instead of getting stuff built, I took a hammer and bashed out a few really glued in pieces. If you want to find out why, stick around. So I had some inch and a half wide pieces uh, attached here. It's actually quite a crucial structural element. It ties in with the front of the cab over there. Uh, if I would have left it, I would have had to build this whole thing out at an inch and a half thick. So I would have had to tack on some more wood so the paneling had something to land on. So I ended up taking it off. I'm going to put a three quarter inch wide piece, which will leave a cleat for the paneling. And then it'll save a little bit of space this whole side. And this whole side, it'll all make sense in a moment. So right now I've cut this corner off just with a jigsaw roughly and I'm going to tack some sticks up there. As a straight edge guide for my router, I'm gonna route that off nice and straight. That is what's happening now. So I've got a couple pieces here. Uh, I'm just gonna place it uh, flush with my line here for my router straight edge. Save the hearing. It's quite echoey in here. And then because I don't want to overcut this, pack this piece in as a stump. So when my bearing comes up here, it's not gonna go past it or create a little cove cutout or because with a router, I really don't trust just two pins. I'm going to put a couple screws. All this plywood is going to be, this is all going to be covered eventually. Okay, I'm back. Don't mind the lights. I had to borrow this extension cord for this router. So I'm just going to follow this edge, trim it off. Okay, that turned out pretty good. Uh, there was an existing overcut from when I first cut the notch out on the saw, but that's fine, it's all getting covered. So I'm going to remove these pieces and go cut a few pieces on the table saw. Date. I've been framing in a few pieces for my archway here. Uh, this is the bench side. That's the reason I cut that angle, just to give a bit more open space when I'm getting in and out. And this is actually going to stay open. This will be filled in. This will all be clad, I think in fur. I'm not sure. So I've also got to fill in all the pieces on the back so it can be clad. These will be wrapped like little posts. This side, I've, this plywood is a weird thickness. So I've got some scraps. So I'm just gonna fur it out with the scraps. Uh, and that will probably be paneling, at least on this side. On this side, I might do a little upper cubby and then this will all be the same cladding. Cause there's gonna be an upper cabinet and a narrow cabinet and my wood stove going here. Well, here <laughs> and coming up. So this will be solidly covered. So I'm just doing a little bit of framing work. Uh, most of it now is filler material for the cladding or sheathing. And that's what's happening right now. And I'm gonna get back to it. It's getting kind of late. I've spent quite a bit of time today uh, trying to work out a few details. I plan on having my insulation go right in between all the way to the wall and then have my uh, interior paneling 
I am concerned, this is MDF, so it will actually be plywood, but it still has some flex, and I don't want the insulation, if it's too flat, to be keeping this flat, so it, I don't really want it to have a segmented look if they're all squared off or if they're pushed up. So what I might do, if I need more space, I can put some strapping here to make it a little tiny bit thicker. And I was gonna do a single layer on the interior, but I might actually do some strips like this, like furring strips, you know, every 10 inches, every foot or whatever, and then do a solid sheet. It might just help fare the curve. If anyone's wondering why my video coming is so crappy, this is my phone holder. It just clicks in there. So that's why I kind of do one camera setups for now. I'd like to get some kind of stand. Uh, one of the biggest things, I mean, I've had it propped on this, prop it up on whatever, but it's being able to angle it. I've got a couple like pieces of edge banding that are there to tilt it. Get my great shot of that corner. Anyway, that's the reason I'm a one camera setup kind of guy right now. Well, it has been some time since I've seen the roof without all the cardboard on it. Sadly, tomorrow's Monday and all the cardboard is going to have to go back on top of it for now. All right, last thing I've got to do, this is all I'll be working on tomorrow. It'll come out naturally of its own accord. I'm going to move my spoon meal base. Uh, that stuff can stay there for now unless I have to use the edge bander. I shouldn't, not right away. Uh, I just gotta move some of this crap. I've got some 10 foot long MDF scraps that I've gotta put up on those racks up there. And then uh, probably pile some of this stuff temporarily on there. And that will be about it for me in the shop today. Back in my life again. Copyright strike. going to pre-cut some of my uh, cotton sheets here. So I plan on turning my camper completely upside down to do the under wing areas and underneath the cab. Well, probably that and the underside of the cab and also the back the butts to the cab window. I might as well do that at the same time. That is the plan. Okay, so I'm just going to weigh this down on this end. Pretty much line it up with the end of the sheet here. Not to be perfect, but. Okay, so I'm just going to. painting shears to cut this. I really wish I could run this through the table saw, but I gotta use these instead. I will say this. Anyway, it should work. I have, I bought some drop cloths from the big orange box store. They were really coarse. I think I've shown them in early, early videos. Some of my finer early work. Tick 
TikTok video here, and I need to shake the bootay. Oh. So not the world's straightest cut. Not bad. It's probably a technique that I'm not using with these pinking shears, which I did get gifted to me by a local neighbor, so thank you very much. The reason I wanted to use pinking shears, I originally bought some painter's drop cloths and they were quite coarse. And uh, they cut okay in one direction. When you cut the other direction, it's like a, the whole strand started coming off and I was leaving these big stringly. It was really coarse and crude, I didn't like it. Action, that was a, just a little scrap. There's actually a double thickness seam where they fold it over at the end. It should work for our purposes. I guess I can try to unstitch it and unfold it. You know what, I just might do that. I'll cut off this little end. I'm gonna try uh, regular scissors versus the pinking shears. Well, they seem to work just fine. But they do tend to fray, or the pinking shears tend not to. Pinking shears for the win. Okay, there we go. So what, I've done a lot of research. Okay, that'll work. Uh, and I've seen a bunch of different ways to do this. I've seen it with just primer or just paint, with glue. Some people have like actually put 50% water, like half and half mixture of water and glue and soak their rags in it and pulled it out and put that on there. Some people roll it on, they roll it on the canvas, they roll it on their thing, they put it on, they smooth it out. Uh, this one lady I saw, she rolled it on, it was full strength. I'm gonna thin it ever so slightly just so it rolls a little bit better, but I'm, like 5% water, you just need a little tiny bit. And then she put her canvas on, and she actually took an iron, and ironed and smoothed it all out as it was on there. And then I'm gonna roll over with another coat of glue after that dries. She went straight to the, she went thinned, 50% water, 50% paint. I'm gonna do first two coats with primer, but to fill the weave, she did 50, 50, and then she did 75 paint, 25% water, and then was full, full strength top coats of paint. So her method seemed to work great. I really like the way she did a little teardrop trailer. It came out really smooth looking. I'm gonna do it on the underside first as a test. So if I screw up, it'll be the least visible place. So this is a fairly good representation. I will be using slightly thinned glue. And I'm not gonna damage or, I'm not gonna waste a roller on this. I'm going to spread this around. Glad I saved 50 sheets of cardboard from all our plywood deliveries. This is going to be one messy job. <laughs> okay. So. This is going to be one messy little job. So this is not getting ironed on here, obviously. But I can see why she'd want to. Okay, well, we'll see how this goes. Interesting. Well, most people say this is a pretty straightforward procedure. Like I said, I've seen it done a ton of different ways. Okay, we're just gonna let this dry. So that is our poor man's fiberglass test, take one. Mm -hmm.